I've written two articles about a substance called ursolic acid in my Applied Metabolics publication. Uh, I think the uh, one of the first articles I wrote about ursolic acid was back in 2015. And the reason I wrote about this particular substance, which probably most of you have never heard of, is because I came across a series of articles in respected scientific publications indicating that ursolic acid had very potent anabolic effects. Uh, now, among what, what it did is it, it stimulated certain anabolic pathways in, in the body that would uh, stimulate muscle growth, including something called the AKT pathway and the insulin-like growth factor 1 pathway, among others. And uh, based on this, I, I wrote, a, I did some research on it. I wrote two articles on it. The first article was based on the, the research that had just come out showing definite uh, stimulation of muscle growth by ursolic acid. The second article I wrote a couple of years later, however, found that ursolic acid was ineffective for promoting muscle growth. And, it, and the research goes back and forth. Well, one thing you have to keep in mind when you're do, talking about ursolic acid is that it's um, the, most of the studies that have found beneficial effects, whether it, it in regard to skeletal muscle increase size or whether it's general health properties of ursolic acid, almost all of them have been with animal studies, rodents, mice, rats, that type of thing. Uh, so again, you know, most of the studies, unfortunately, have involved animal studies, and also they've involved in vitro or cell studies where they've exposed, let's say, muscle cells to uh, ursolic acid, and they've shown very rather potent anabolic effects. Now, ursolic acid, as I say, it's a natural substance. It's found in a number of foods, cranberries, oregano, thyme. Uh, one of the richest natural sources is apple peels. Now, it's only in the peel. It's not in the fruit of the apple. If you throw away the apple peels, you're not getting any ursolic acid. But apple peels happen to be one of the richest natural sources. The richest natural source of ursolic acid are herbs. Rosemary, an herb called rosemary, is 3% ursolic acid by weight. And the second uh, herb that has the highest content of ursolic acid is sage. Sage is 1.5%. Sage, by the way, is a, a very, very good herb for brain health. Uh, it, 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 it causes uh, changes or it has a protective effect in the brain against degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease, and it actually increases brain efficiency. It's kind of a nootropic herb, but that's getting off the subject. Uh, I just want to uh, read you here a, um, just a, a little reference. This is a, um, a article, one of the articles that, uh, that, that basically um, caused me to write some of my original articles on ursolic acid. This is from a journal called Plus One, and this was published in 2012. <coughs> Excuse me. The title is Ursolic Acid Increases Skeletal Muscle and Brown Fat and Decreases Diet-Induced Obesity, Glucose Intolerance, and Fatty Liver Disease. Now, just looking at that title alone is very impressive because it's saying that ursolic acid increases skeletal muscle mass and increases brown fat, which is uh, also called BAT. That's a thermogenic tissue that converts calories into heat and, and actually helps um, control body fat. It, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a fat that burns fat. And by doing this, it decreases diet-induced uh, obesity. Glucose intolerance is, a, is a related to the development of diabetes, uh, and fatty liver disease is an epidemic uh, problem uh, where an estimated 20 million Americans are walking around with uh, fatty liver disease. doesn't give any overt symptoms. Anyway, but this particular study, uh, unfortunately, uh, again, it involved mice. And the study showed that, sure enough, it, uh, providing uh, uh, ursolic acid increased skeletal muscle AKT activity, and also uh, it, it, the mice who consumed a high-fat diet that lacked or containing uh, ursolic acid, they did two different types. Uh, the, uh, in skeletal muscle, ursolic acid increased AK activity, as well as downstream messenger RNAs that promote glucose utilization, blood vessel recruitment, and, and IGF, or insulin-like growth factor 1 signaling. So that was one of the uh, 
studies that, that uh, there were several like that, that even though it was a, uh, even though it was a, uh, a, a, uh, a mouse study, uh, hold on a second, um, I just, I just accidentally did it. Hold on a second, wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. It was, a, it was a mouse study, but it, it, you know the the uh, the reason I wrote about it was because uh, the same mechanisms that existed in the mouse or the rat also existed in humans. So because of that, I uh, I wrote about arsenic acid, and, and this is my first article. I thought it might be a useful uh, supplement for bodybuilders and athletes, people that are looking to uh, gain muscle mass. Uh, now. Besides the uh, the effect on on these uh, let's say anabolic signaling fig, fig, uh, signals, uh, ursalic acid has been shown to have a couple of other health benefits. That's anti-inflammatory. It helps reduce inflammation. Now, inflammation, systemic inflammation, as I pointed out in many of my articles in applied metabolics and in videos, inflammation, uh, systemic inflammation, or inflammation throughout the body, is a low level. Uh, inflammation that really you really can't feel, but it's it actually has catabolic effects on muscle. It help it breaks down muscle and inhibits muscle growth. So that's another mechanism where ursulic acid might have uh, helped build some muscle. It's an antioxidant. It helps protect cells from oxidative damage, uh, excess oxidative damage produced by let's say free radicals, or what they call reactive oxygen species. These are byproducts of oxygen metabolism that delay exercise recovery and also uh, interfere with muscle growth to a certain extent, although a certain amount of oxidation uh, is actually, uh, or uh, not oxidation, but uh, a certain amount of uh, short-term inflammation right after exercise actually stimulates anabolic pathways. Uh, your uh, ursulic acid also suppresses a, a substance called nuclear ca factor kappa B, that's involved in promoting cancer and tumors in the body. So in that respect, uh, ursulic acid has anti-cancer effects. Because of the way it stimulates brown adipose tissue, ursulic acid can reduce diet, uh, induce obesity, it can reduce fatty liver and glucose intolerance, and also it can help prevent diabetes, making it anti-diabetic. Uh, some uh, animal studies show that uric, uh, ursulic acid helps promote gastric protection, therefore it prevents ulcers, it has antimicrobial properties, it prevents uh, infections, uh, it seems to have anti-properties uh, uh, against herpes viruses, it also seems to help uh, have, uh, deve in the, prevent develop, help to prevent the development of atherosclerosis as a for, for, uh, forerunner of cardiovascular disease. So uh, it, it has, a, it seems to uh, now, that, this is all sounds great, but there's one big problem. Almost all of the studies that show these uh, effects involve animals. There's very little research. However, as I said, I did two articles on ursolic acid for my applied metabolics. Uh, the first one was a positive article where I predicted that ursolic acid could, could, based on preliminary research, possibly be a useful anabolic substance. But the se second article, a couple of years later, a couple, uh, some studies came out showing that, unfortunately, ursolic acid does not seem to work in humans the way it does in uh, animals or like, like rats and mice. The most recent study I have here in my hand, uh, this kind of puts the uh, nails on the so-called ursolic acid coffin. The title is Ursolic Acid has, and it has No Additional Effect on Muscle Strength and Mass in Active men undergoing a high protein diet and resistance training so in other words this was a human study so this is the this is the uh, this is this this is the kind of uh, research that you want to look at uh, and basically uh, it, it compared ursolic acid to a, uh, a placebo it showed there was no difference uh, as far as gaining muscle sign and strength between the two uh, they were they were um, let me see hold on a second and there was no increase in muscle strength as measured by one repetition, one rep max in the bench press. So basically, uh, this study kind of more or less shows that uh, ur ursulic acid seems to have an anabolic effect in uh, animals uh, such as rats.
cats and mice and It actually So subscribe today. When you subscribe, send me a email invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, and general health and medicine. I, he I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage, where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything that interests them relating to nutrition and exercise. And I will answer the question in appreciation of their subscription to Applied Metabolics. So clearly this only applies to current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions. Uh, so that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local. Oh, if you feel that this um, these videos are of use to you, uh, please feel, feel free to subscribe to this channel, my channel on, on, uh, on um, uh, YouTube. Uh, I don't have a lot of fancy graphics and bells and whistles, but I, the one thing I can promise you is all the information that I impart in these videos, which are posted every Tuesday, is solid evidence-based truth. And you'll notice there's no advertisements, and I'm not pushing any products, and I don't have any sponsors uh, that I'm beholden to to push their products. Uh, however, I'm not going to lie, uh, I would be open to having sponsors for my videos, uh, but the thing is, I would only accept sponsors that I feel are selling products that are useful and real. Uh, there no garbage, no fake. Um, I would not accept a any amount of money from people like that. And I, uh, and I think that uh, some of these so-called influencers, many of whom have advanced degrees, who do accept money from these crappy advertisers, I think they're sacrificing their integrity 
which is something I would never do. Uh, you know, I, I, for example, I would never take a uh, ad from a so-called green powder product because I think that's probably one of the worst supplements on the market. It's grossly overpriced, absolute garbage, n uh, nutritionally bereft. The amount of nutrients it contains wouldn't nu nourish an ant. And it has almost no fiber. It certainly doesn't provide the uh, benefits of eating actual fresh fruits and vegetables. It's a big, big ripoff. So, but you know, uh, they pay one. A couple of these companies have made a lot of money from suckers who buy that crap. And that they what they do is they go after medical professionals. Some of these guys have MDs and PhDs. They pay them big bucks to push their products in their videos. I mean, some of these guys make $25,000 per video just from pushing their green product. Shows you, you know, that's pretty good money. But I, I, I wouldn't take it because I, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror knowing I'm pushing an absolute crap product. I would not do it. So anyway, that's about it. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.